a guided walking tour of the Balboa Fun Zone in Newport Beach, California, one of California's last great remaining seaside amusement parks. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. And let me turn the camera around so you can see what I see. So as we start the walk right here, we're beginning it right at the ferry that goes from Balboa Island to Balboa Peninsula. Taking a look out here into the harbor, you can see one of those car ferries is docking right there. It's got a nice yellow car on it. As a matter of fact, these little car ferries put three cars on them and they go back and forth from the peninsula where the fun zone is located to Balboa Island just across the way. Costs just a few bucks. It's pretty neat to do. You can take your car on it. You can take your bike on it. You can take just your person on it. Different rates for each. Now, if you wanted to rent a boat to go out into the harbor, you can totally do that here at Balboa Boat Rentals. You can rent a boat two hours, a couple hundred dollars. But it's a fun zone, so there's rides here, and this Ferris wheel has a sign that says it is the world's longest ferris wheel ride ferris wheel ride we'll take a look at that in a second here we see the cars coming off that ferry and we can see three cars can ride the ferry at a time you can see people coming off the ferry and usually there's a bit of a line in the summer to ride the ferry there's probably about 10 cars lined up to ride it so it might take you a little while before you can get on one because it only takes three per ride but they come pretty quick because it's a pretty short crossing across the harbor and I think it's definitely something you should do if you come here you should also explore Balboa Island if you want to see more about Balboa Island. I've got a whole video on that as well. So here is the sign about the Ferris wheel that said it's the world's longest Ferris wheel ride. Wait, they've got some subtext on it. It could be, it could be the world's longest Ferris wheel ride. How much does this ride cost? One ride costs you five bucks on it, but it does have some really great views of the water. There's also an arcade here because any good oceanfront fun zone should have an arcade. Let's go ahead and take a look. This mostly redemption games for the kiddos. They're all having a good time. No arcade to be complete without skee ball. Look, there is one pinball machine right here. If you like pinball called the Munsters, there's that redemption counter that the kiddos can redeem all of their prizes. But most importantly, most importantly now for any seaside amusement park, right here is Zoltar. The fortune telling machine speaks to you and tells your fortune for one dollar. This Zoltar is wearing a mask for the pandemic. Zoltar, thank you for keeping us safe. I appreciate it. Now, if renting those boats or the Ferris wheel was not adventuresome enough, you can go parasailing. There's a parasailing company right here. They don't post their prices because I'm guessing it is quite expensive. There's a big trampoline that you can jump up and down on. Over on the right, there's this thing called Discovery Cubes Ocean Quest. It looks like it's just kind of closed right now, but that's where you'll find the restrooms in the back of that building. There's also what this ride, which is it the, the, the happy swing is what they call it. That's five bucks a ride. There's a coconut climb. Kids can climb on that and you can buy tickets for the fun zone from this friendly lady right here. Just not for the Ferris wheel. You'll find lots of cheap eats here at the Balboa fun zone. Lots of pizza, lots of cotton candy, lots of corn dogs. I've eaten at this one, the two slices of pizza and a drink for $6.75. You know, it's not the world's best pizza, but it is certainly priced right, that's for sure. Or you can get some ice cream cones, and this place has this very kind of just like old timey seaside kind of vibe. And it's actually um, compared to the Newport Beach Pier. There's two piers in Newport Beach. I have a whole video about the Newport Beach Pier. That one's closer to the freeway. This one's about two more miles further down into the peninsula. And so I usually find it's less busy down here. So if you're looking for, uh, like it's too busy there and you can't park, come down further south to the fun zone. I'm gonna widen this camera to show you what we see here. This is the Balboa Pavilion, this is Newport Beach's oldest building built in 1906. This was the terminal of the red line from 
uh, Los Angeles to get here. It originally served as a bathing house. It was a gambling place. It was a bingo parlor. Uh, and today it's the terminal for the Catalina Flyer, the boat that you can take to Catalina. There's a few companies that operate Catalina ferries but as you can see right here this is what the one uh that looks like come from here actually i think it's a little bit bigger but that one just says cruises departing from newport beaches says catalina uh anyway when the boat is here it is docked right there and so now this balboa pavilion is a uh, restaurant and this terminal for the catalina passenger service there's also some neat pictures in it that you can see the history and so we will check that out so this is the catalina flyer we can see right here the uh, fares it is 70 dollars round trip uh, to catalina island and there's a map of Catalina Island right here. That's the island just off the coast. Takes you about an hour to get there. And if you go to Catalina, you pretty much stay in this little town called Avalon. Most of the stuff you can hike inland. There's an airport, almost nobody flies there. There's a small other town called Two Harbors, but that one's just a little tiny town. So let's go ahead and go in this pavilion a little bit just so you can see the historic thing. Oh, by the way, this, uh, you can see this is a, um, registered historical monument. Uh, it says that it is one of California's last surviving examples of a waterfront recreational pavilion. And these are a bunch of old historical pictures of what Newport Beach looked like in the early days. You can see this is what it looked like. Um, you know, that old car is 1906, and here is what that pavilion looked like when it first opened. And I mentioned it was a bathing house. People would come here to change into their bathing attire to then go to the beach. And the restaurant uh, really has a neat old timey, woody look to it. Great views of the harbor. Uh, there's an upstairs as well that I think is available for special events currently. Okay, now that direction will take us to the beach, which we'll go to in just a minute. But first, we're going to check out Davy's Locker Sport Fishing. Uh, there's a bunch of whale watching tours and sport fishing tours that leave here. But uh, if you need to get like fishing equipment or things like that, you will find them here inside Davy's Locker. And uh, lines, rods, all that sort of stuff in here. And uh, they also rent electric boats too. There's a lot, of, a lot of companies that rent these things. The classic electric boat, this one here is called the Duffy. Uh, and uh, they're, they're pretty fun to rent. If you've got a few people, 200 bucks for a couple hours, and you can kind of break that up. Now, what you'll notice is there's really, there's no parking around here for this Catalina Flyer. Where is all the parking? Well, we'll see the parking in a bit. It is over by the Balboa Pier, close by, just a couple blocks away. I want to make sure I don't get run over by that bike. That would not be a good ending for this video. Most of the shops around here, little small shops, um, kind of touristy, cheap stuff. I find a lot of the businesses turn over quickly in this neighborhood. This neighborhood around the fun zone is called the Balboa Village and things just come and go, I think, owing to the fact that it's just less busy and less popular here. But because I can park easier here and if you don't want to struggle with the traffic to get here then you can park on Balboa Island and then take the ferry over across here that is what we often do but this has this old kind of historic vibe to it you can see here they put a little mural on the wall to also paint what it looked like back in the early 1900s and if there's probably one like kind of classic Instagram picture to take or something like that of the Balboa Pavilion. It's right down this street of the classic pavilion there. Okay, heading back to the beach. There's this old classic Balboa pharmacy on the corner. You know, pharmacies used to be these places that sold like everything under the sun. And this pharmacy is one of those places you can get your drugs, you can get your food, you can get your beach supplies in here, you can even get your COVID-19 rapid tests, and you can get your seasick pills from here. So if you're going to Catalina, you might want to get that. This is the main road in the Balboa Peninsula. If you take that two miles in that direction, you will get to the Newport Beach Pier. That's what I drove to get down here. And if you drive down the other way on 
Balboa Boulevard, as it's called, about a mile, you will get to the wedge, which is the end of the peninsula. The Balboa Peninsula itself is about three or four blocks wide. It is not very wide, uh, so makes it pretty easy to like explore the whole thing. This is a um, neat hotel here, the Balboa Inn. There are very few hotels uh, in Newport Beach that are kind of like oceanfront. And so this is one of them. I haven't personally stayed here, but the hotel does look nice. I've heard good things about it. It's also got an Italian restaurant in it. He's just kind of got this neat, charming little courtyard. They've made it look uh, particularly Italian uh, and they keep this place up pretty well. Pretty quiet, not too rowdy, although it is right across the street from Cabo Cantina, which could be one of Newport Beach's rowdiest bars. Uh, here's, the, here's the lobby of the Balboa Inn. Small little lobby, clean, looks recently remodeled. So if you are staying here and you want to sleep well at night, you might wish to ask for a room that does not face the Cabo Cantina. We are crossing the bike path. This bike path, also two miles that way, would take you to the Newport Beach Pier. And in the other direction, this uh, bike path actually ends just a few blocks down that way. So this is almost the terminus of the Balboa Peninsula bike path. Uh, on the right, there's this place called uh, Boardwalk Balboa Lilies. OC Girl and I have uh, eaten there once. Uh, pretty decent brunch type food. There's also a place here called Tacos Cancun. If you're looking for some beachfront tacos, you'll find them right here. All pretty reasonably priced. Burrito is going to cost you nine bucks. Two taco combo is going to cost you ten dollars. Now, this sign right here for Ruby's Diner tells us that on this pier, this plaque commemorates the opening of the original Ruby's Diner on this pier in 1982. Unfortunately, Ruby's isn't doing so hot lately and they've been closing a lot of locations. This one looks like it's still doing pretty well. We will get to that and see it at the end. I want to show you on this map kind of where this area that we've been walking around looks like. Uh, we started walking right here at the ferry entrance. We walked down the fun zone. We walked to the Balboa Pavilion. We came down Main Street and now we are here at the Balboa Pier. The best parking is this big parking lot right here in front of the pier. If you're coming to the Catalina Ferry and going to Catalina, you can park in this lot for long-term parking. It's about $30 a day if you park here to go to Catalina. If you're just here for hourly parking, it's currently $2.80 per hour. Uh, so this pier, uh, was built at the same time as the Balboa Pavilion so that when people took that red car down the Newport Beach, they'd come to the pavilion, they would change into their bathing attire, they would walk here on the pier, they would say, gosh, this is amazing, and then they would want to buy a house here in Newport Beach. That was the theory, and it worked because in 1906 there was nothing. It was swampland, and now it's super popular. Uh, decent restrooms here by the beach, some swings and toys, uh, some showers. Uh, you see, we got the lifeguard towers here. They build the sand up here in a bit of a of a berm uh, to protect the parking lot from the water. So the beach here is not quite as wide as it is up uh, at the Newport Beach Pier to the north. And most people like to just set themselves up right on that berm. That's kind of the place to be. This part of the beach is not as good for walking because of this big berm. Uh, it's kind of like heavily angled if you are trying to walk here. You'll notice the waves are nearly non-existent today, which is typical for a Newport Beach summer. And you see off in the distance to the north, you see the Newport Beach Pier. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see that down there. Uh, that one currently does not have a restaurant on it. The restaurant's been closed for 10 years over there. Now, if we look here to the south, 
By the way, this pier is open most of the day. It is closed midnight to 5 a.m., which is what the sign on the gate says. Now, these, this is Laguna Beach in the distance. Uh, Newport Coast is that hill in the distance. And if you see some uh, office towers back in the distance, this way by the palm trees, that's Fashion Island, which is uh, kind of the big shopping mall in Newport Beach. If you're looking for a food court and shops, you'll find it in Fashion Island. In my Corona Del Mar travel guide, I take you through uh, uh, that particular shopping center. Okay, so walking down the pier here, this one, as compared to the Newport Beach Pier to the north, does not have very many benches. Actually, there are very few benches here. This pier is also shorter, so uh, it'll take you less time to walk down it. I am shooting this video on a Friday in July. It's currently 3.30 p.m. Temperature is about 73 degrees. The water temperature is in the mid 60s. So a little bit chilly to go in the water. Now, this beach is also not as good for kiddos as the one uh, by the other pier because of the steep shore that has more of a shore break and the waves come up and down pretty quickly. Take a look here at the surf zone. When a wave's coming in, you can see these waves break right on the shore. They're good for the boogie boarders to have a lot of practice. If you don't, then this isn't really a great place for you. Waves like today, once again, be careful. We've got one more good size wave coming right in. You can see this is about four feet tall. So if you've got kiddos standing there, this is gonna come right up on them over their head. And here comes one more that's big. You see that guy is just eaten by that wave. Lots of people like this pier for fishing as they do the uh, pier to the north. Definitely one of the classic California pier pastimes is fishing from the piers. This Ruby's is a two-story operation on the ground floor. They got a little window that you can order uh, things for a bit of takeout. They have a sit-down perspective on the back. Also on the top, it's sit-down uh, for counter service. We see one of the waitresses just walk past us on the left. Ruby's is kind of a 1950s themed diner, so they wear those red and white striped uh, dresses and uh, waiters who work there all wear kind of the paper white hats to keep you in that shtick. Mostly burgers, hot dogs, sandwiches. Is it the best food in the world? No. Is it the best view in the world? Yes. How many places do you get to eat on a second story at the end of the pier? Not that many. So if you're picking a place to eat, I would pick this place to eat if I was a tourist here, just so that I could say I sat on the end of the pier and had a hamburger. How much does a hamburger here cost? Currently, uh, the regular burger costs $14. Hot dog costs you $8.50 and uh, they're also popular for their shakes. So here is the full service restaurant. Currently got the counter outside and you can see they've got currently indoor seating and outdoor seating, uh, but it has the kind of the neat um, well, we'll see it from the other side. Kind of just that neat old timey feel on the inside of like an old place that has a bar and pancakes. Uh, and so it's also cool to sit out here and on the second level, though if it were me, I, I might wait for a second story table. We got a lot of friendly people right here. Looks like they're having a good party. Yeah, good deal. If you want to find this later, it's on Yellow Productions on YouTube. So everybody wave to YouTube. All right, great. Hi, everybody. Okay friendly people there. Uh, and so here's just the inside of this small place. You can see there's that old bar right there. There are the booths, old kind of shake counter, just a neat spot. And some old timey art that says, what I want is a Coke. I feel kind of sad that Ruby's as a chain isn't doing all that well. They had some really great locations. They just didn't really keep up with the level of their food. So again, if you do eat here and you say, Chris, it, the burger in and out burger was better. The burger at in and out burger is better, but in and out burger's view is not quite as epic as this one.
Well, if your travels bring you to Newport Beach, you might enjoy some of my other walking tours. The Newport Beer to the north, Balboa Island, just across there. You'll also find links in the description below. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of those videos.